Good afternoon. My name is Wendy Chamberlain. I'm president of the Middle East Institute. Is this on? It's not on. And they make me open it up to make sure that everything is working well <laughs> before we begin our program. So welcome, everybody. I see many uh, familiar faces. Uh, we're delighted that you could join us here for uh, what I'm sure will be uh, an enormously interesting and revealing talk by the new ambassador, Pakistani ambassador to Washington, D.C. Ambassador Jelani. Uh, Marvin Weinbaum, uh, the director of the Middle East Institute's Center for Pakistan Studies, will moderate the discussion. Marvin is a true uh, South Asian expert. He has a long history in academia. He served in the uh, where I met him at the State Department in the uh, Intelligence Bureau, and he has uh, joined the Middle East Institute for about eight years. Is it, uh, That's ten. Ten years now. So I will uh, uh, please join me in welcoming uh, Ambassador Jihad. <laughs> Allow me to do the formal introduction of the ambassador, uh, who we're delighted uh, is able to join us this afternoon. Uh, he's just been here less than two months, and this is one of the first public fora that he's addressed, and so we're particularly pre pleased that he's done it through the auspices of the Middle East Institute. Um, Wendy has introduced me, but I, I have to say a few words, I should say a few words about the ambassador. Uh, I don't think it uh, would be uh, an overstatement to say he's one of the most respected, highly, highly regarded, seasoned diplomats that Pakistan has today. Uh, and so I think the United States should feel honored that he's been appointed here uh, to this post. Uh, he's been here before. Uh, from 1995 to 1999, uh, he was here in the embassy. So he's not entirely uh, uh, a newcomer. Uh, those of us who've been around for a while perhaps ran into him back then. But uh, he comes to us now having had, I think this is his fourth ambassadorship. He's been foreign secretary. Uh, well, the list is, is, is obviously very long. So it's, it's with great pleasure that I introduce him, particularly at this moment, in terms of what is happening in Pakistan. There are some changes that seem to be afoot there, and uh, we, uh, we welcome uh, his uh, observations about those and anything else that he'd like to share with us. Thank you, Ambassador. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Thank you, uh, Marvin. You have been a very good friend, uh, old young friend. <laughs> and Ambassador Wendy Chamberlain, uh, uh, thank you so much for inviting me to the Middle East Institute. Uh, again, Ambassador Wendy Chamberlain, uh, she is uh, uh, very well known in Pakistan. She served in Pakistan with, uh, with their distinction, and she has many friends in Pakistan. Uh, uh, for me, um, certainly it's a great honor to be uh, posted back to, uh, to uh, Washington, D.C., where I spent four beautiful years, very uh, rewarding years from 1905 to 1909. Uh, uh, but I thought that this time, after my previous assignment as the Foreign Secretary, I would um, uh, perhaps get a, a bit of a respite from the kind of responsibility that I had, but I have come to, to realize that Washington is certainly not going to be a picnic um, that I thought it would be. But certainly I, um, I am representing, uh, it's a great honor to be representing Pakistan uh, in Washington, D.C., a country, uh, Pakistan, as you know, that is a country which, uh, uh, which uh, uh, has uh, a special relationship with the United States of America. Um, uh, it is a country, um, I'm sure that more, many of you, you would be aware of the geography um, of Pakistan. Uh, we have 
2,900 long, uh, kilometers long border with Afghanistan. We have 1,000 uh, kilometers long border with uh, Iran. Uh, we have uh, a very long border with uh, China, uh, about 1,000 uh, kilometers long border. And in India, uh, about 2,600 kilometers long border. I remember that uh, when I was I had gone to a university and I uh, mentioned this geography to the students, um, one, <laughs> somebody, uh, said, you know, abruptly said, wow, it's, it's a very, uh, very challenging neighborhood that you live in. And certainly uh, neighborhood challenges, uh, it, it is certainly a, a, a challenging neighborhood that, that we live in. But certainly as uh, I speak to you today, and uh, it's some very important developments have taken part in Pakistan in uh, our own sort of domestic environment, as well as in our relations with uh, the neighboring countries and also with the United States of America. Uh, I, after spending a a number of years outside on my various diplomatic assignments and asteroid assignments. This time when I had gone back to Pakistan, I witnessed a, a, some very positive uh, changes in Pakistan. Uh, certainly they paid these, those changes that I witnessed uh, and uh, uh, less mentioned uh, at the uh, outside Pakistan, I thought that uh, I should briefly recount those important changes which have taken place. And when the uh, uh, Ambassador Chamberlain was in Pakistan, certainly uh, the time that she was in Pakistan and the time that, uh, that currently we have, there is a marked difference. Demo democracy is very well set in. We had a very smooth uh, democratic transition that had recently taken place. Uh, one civilian government, democratically elected government, after completing its, its term, uh, was able to uh, smoothly transfer power to another civilian government. We have a very strong uh, independent judiciary, the kind of judiciary that we had not seen before. And, uh, uh, and also free and vibrant media. Uh, you know, you have the kind of media uh, which is perhaps the freest, and the, there is a competition going on within the media to um, to uh, focus on, on important issues, governance, uh, uh, democracy, uh, corruption, uh, uh, anything, or including foreign policy issues. And then we have a very assertive parliament. Uh, I, uh, the number of times that I have, uh, I used to be summoned by the various parliamentary committees to, to, uh, to speak and to describe uh, um, <coughs> You know, to answer them on a whole range of foreign policy issues. Again, is something that well, I thought was a wonderful thing because I could see that in the process, not only that I was getting a very good feedback from the members of the parliament, but also I was able to tell them, and I used to be subjected to a lot of questioning. Uh, economic outlook, uh, again, uh, in the last uh, six months, uh, seven, seven to eight months, uh, ever since the new government has taken over, there is a lot of focus on the economic revival, on um, uh, the 4E strategy that the government has formulated, the revival of economy, uh, extremism, education, and energy. And uh, I am very, very confident in saying that the scorecard on all these uh, areas, in all these areas, has been very, very impressive. Uh, the economy has uh, registered an impressive growth of 5% uh, from 2.9% last year. Uh, tax to GDP ratio has improved significantly by 17%. And also we have uh, uh, the fiscal deficit has been reduced because of uh, the formidable um, support that we received from the United States of America on a range of uh, projects related to economy and also energy, we have been able to add um, about uh, 1,200 megawatts of electricity because of your, uh, because of the U.S. Uh, support. 
and 1,700 megawatts of electricity by the government uh, in the national grid by uh, by uh, by uh, 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 reducing the or paying for the uh, circular debt that had accumulated to almost five billion dollars. So these were no, um, you know, the economic reforms normally take the long term to show the result, but the kind of results that we have seen in the last. Um, a couple of months, they gave us a lot of hope that the economy is on a, on a very, very good path. Um, side, uh, simultaneously, the government is also embarked upon um, uh, launching some impressive mega projects in the hydro sector, in uh, the power sector, and uh, infrastructure projects which would generate a lot of economic activity and also uh, <coughs> would help in many ways in providing employment to the people of Pakistan. So these are all wonderful developments. IMF uh, recently had a uh, second review of the, uh, of the program and expressed great satisfaction with the kind of steps that uh, Pakistan has taken. And we have absolutely no doubt that in the coming days, the situation is certainly going to be, become much better. Uh, the, uh, on the issue of uh, terrorism, extremism, it is uh, a very, very important uh, issue for us because uh, we uh, are aware of the fact that unless we improve the internal security situation, certainly the economic agenda that the government is embarked upon, we will not be able to, to, uh, to achieve the desired results. So accordingly, a comprehensive um, uh, strategy to deal with this extremism has been formed, uh, has, been, uh, uh, has been adopted, has been approved by the cabinet, and um, is in the implementation stage. Um, uh, as part of this policy, we had, um, uh, we had offered a dialogue to the uh, militants, to elements from the TTP, and we told them that if they uh, come to a reasonable term, um, Constitution of Pakistan is the deadline. If they are willing to, to discuss this thing and uh, uh, come to terms, then certainly we uh, will talk to them. Otherwise, we will deal with this uh, uh, issue with great force. Um, we are uh, confident that the kind of strategy that has been developed, that has, uh, 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 that enjoys this overwhelming support of uh, majority of the people in Pakistan. The uh, limited airstrikes that we have launched in the last couple of days, they have been uh, 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 supported by, uh, by everybody in Pakistan, by, the, by most political parties, most political parties. This was, <coughs> strategy was uh, debated. And I think the, uh, um, it, uh, uh, it will have, the desired uh, 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 results very, very soon. Uh, on Pakistan-U.S. relations, um, uh, two years ago, I, when I took over as the Foreign Secretary, I witnessed a lot of turbulence in this relationship. We had uh, 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 a difficult, uh, challenging environment uh, uh, that we had to encounter. Uh, narrative on both sides uh, was negative. Um, um, there were uh, a huge trust gap uh, between our two sides. But I think uh, with uh, patient diplomacy, uh, uh, internal reflection, because uh, with both sides, the period uh, of tension in which we had um, uh, uh, the formal dialogue process had slowed down between the U.S. and Pakistan. It also provided us an opportunity to reflect uh, uh, both sides. Uh, and also, um, uh, I think the honesty and candor and respect for each other's comfort level, uh, that is something that, uh, that, were, that brought us back to this relationship. I, uh, in my diplomatic career, I have dealt with this Pakistan-U.S. relationship for a long time. I joined the service. Uh, when I joined the service, I served as a desk officer uh, dealing with Pakistan-U.S. relations. My posting to Washington, D.C. 
1995-2. My uh, uh, stay in uh, the Prime Minister's office and also my last posting, I had seen many ups and downs in this relationship. But at the same time, I have absolutely no doubt that this is a very, very important relationship. And despite the lows, we both need each other. And this is something that is perhaps the beauty of this relationship. Uh, uh, we have, uh, because when we decided to go back to uh, resume, resume this, uh, revive this strategic partnership, we came back uh, at the shortest possible time. Uh, the strategic dialogue was, to, uh, was revived uh, in July 2012. The uh, five working groups were established. Working group on on uh, on the economy and trade, counterterrorism and law enforcement, um, energy working group on energy, working group on on uh, uh, defense cooperation. <laughs> and also a working group on a nuclear non-proliferation and strategic stability. Uh, and you would be amazed to know that these uh, working groups in a short span of, uh, I would say, one year they have met twice and they have uh, been able to come up with a wonderful plan of action, a plan of action with which both Pakistan and uh, uh, the US would feel very, very comfortable. Um, the uh, ground lines of communication um, uh, are open, except for minor uh, hitch on the Torkham border, again because of some um, political issues, uh, not because of uh, any, any um, uh, uh, difficulty on the part of the federal government. But then again, you must have uh, uh, read yesterday that the Peshawar High Court it has uh, declared the, uh, the uh, protest that was being launched by one political party as null and void as against, uh, against law. So, and also today, the um, leaders of that particular party, which have was agitating uh, this particular issue, they have also um, uh, announced uh, that, they, that there will be no more um, sit-ins in, against these uh, things. So, we also hope that the uh, GDOX, uh, the uh, other route, which is the uh, Torfum route, would be open uh, in, a, in a matter of, in a day or so. Um, there has been a good progress on counterterrorism and the uh, uh, IED. That IED has become a very important issue for both our countries, but I think we have been able to forge a very good partnership in order to destroy a large number of IED factories. Uh, 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 and U.S. is also committed to, uh, to expand trade and economic relations. The Prime Minister, when he was here in October, uh, he had a wonderful interaction with President Obama. Uh, the lead, both leaders, they, I think they developed a good um, um, uh, friendship. And the, uh, 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 the uh, Prime Minister also had a meeting with um, uh, more, more than half a dozen members of the cabinet and those meetings were also very good. We witnessed a lot of positivity at every level. Uh, there are convergences, I must say, that in our relationship and uh, less <coughs> convergences and convergences in our relationship at the moment. Uh, for instance, we both, uh, um, uh, you know, we have convergence uh, to promote uh, uh, regional peace and stability. Uh, we raise a convergence to secure a peaceful Afghanistan, uh, fight against Al-Qaeda and terrorism. That is another area of convergence between our two sides. And, and to safe haven on both sides of the border. Um, um, uh, in the tribal areas of Pakistan and also in Nuristan and Kunrat in Afghanistan. Uh, we have convergences on IED, uh, against IEDs, against uh, uh, and on GLOCs, uh, greater regional cooperation and connectivity is another area of convergence between that we both the U.S. wants to promote, and this is something that we uh, we also wish to do that. And then the safety and security of our nuclear 
assets is again an area of convergences. We are happy that the US side on a number of occasions has expressed uh, great satisfaction on the security and safety of Pakistan's nuclear assets. Uh, there are issues of um, this uh, uh, Haqqani network is certainly remains an issue uh, which is uh, often talked about between our two sides. Shaquille Afridi uh, is another issue which is uh, uh, which is raised by which have been raised in my interactions recently. Uh, and drone strikes is certainly that remains an issue between our two sides. Um, how do we take this relationship forward? Uh, I think that's something that is going to be the main challenge uh, for both Pakistan and the US. I think the uh, important thing I was just, when I was um, uh, uh, jotting down notes in the morning for my, uh, this talk uh, this afternoon, I thought that the um, uh, building trust was perhaps uh, the most important aspect that we need to build. Uh, when we had trust, you all know that we were able to uh, work very, very cooperatively and we were able to defeat or achieve our objectives in Afghanistan um, um, against the Soviet Union. Um, that perhaps is a, is a very uh, clear example of uh, a good cooperative relationship and a a relationship which was based on trust. You have trust, you have cooperation, and then you are able to achieve your objectives in, in any part of the world. <coughs> I think the uh, respect for each other's comfort level is something which is very, very important. Um, I, um, based on my personal ex experience, uh, Ambassador Chamberlain asked me that I should also share my personal experiences uh, when talking to uh, this wonderful audience. And uh, I would lay a lot of emphasis on this, uh, on building, um, on respect for each other's comfort level. I learned this, uh, this thing during my posting to India. Uh, India, as you know, uh, we don't have a, we didn't have a glorious relationship with India. We have had wars, we have had tension, uh, we have, uh, we have uh, unresolved issues. Um, and in 2013, when I was asked to leave India uh, in the height of tension between our two countries, when I went back um, to India after a year to negotiate the terms of the peace process, one thing that I was able to agree with my uh, Indian counterpart was, at that time, that if we respect each other's comfort level, we would be able to make a lot of progress. And when he asked me, um, what is the comfort level that you're talking about? And I mentioned that in the course of this peace process, we both will come up with a number of ideas. Some of the ideas would be uh, uh, acceptable to you, some of the ideas would not be acceptable to us, but let's not make those as an issue or as a propaganda tool to blacken each other. Uh, but let's focus on the positives in this relationship, and I think from the peace process when it was revived in 2004 till 2008, we were able to make very good progress. And if you uh, uh, maybe a separate session uh, when it is held on, say, just Pakistan-India relations in this forum, I would be very happy to elaborate on this, this point. Uh, try and uh, uh, respect each other's priorities and concerns. Uh, I think we, both, from both sides, it works both by the side, that, you know, we need to be aware of uh, your priorities and concerns, and the, at the same time, the U.S. should also be aware of our priorities and concerns. We um, should stop looking at this relationship through uh, single issues. Uh, in the last 10, 12 years, um, most of our 
divergences related to the situation in Afghanistan. We had a different perspective how to fix the situation in Afghanistan, and the U.S. had a totally different perspective how to, uh, to fix the situation in Afghanistan. But then that single uh, issue became the, uh, uh, you know, uh, most of the time the discussion would revolve on uh, discuss discussions on Afghanistan rather than building a strong bilateral relationship uh, between the two sides. Uh, expansion of trade. I think trade, if you, uh, uh, as the economy of Pakistan is picking up, expansion of trade and economic relation between U.S. and Pakistan would further strengthen this, this uh, relationship. And why I say this? Because um, a strong economy in Pakistan, with the help of the United States of America, would convey the impression of a long-term strategic partnership between uh, the people of Pakistan and the United States of America. The European Union recently gave us GSP plus concessions, the, which is the trade concessions for four years, keeping in view the, uh, the sacrifices that we made against war on terror, the, uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, uh, beating that we got as a result of the 30 years war uh, in Af Afghanistan and the resultant uh, economic slowdown and also uh, in terms of human losses that we suffered. And also the, uh, because of the natural calamities that Pakistan had in 2010 and previously uh, the uh, earthquake which resulted in the death of 100,000 people. <coughs> the earthquake also uh, made, made a major economic, uh, you know, negative consequences for Pakistan. So a, a, an innovative approach to help Pakistan build its economy would certainly convey a very, very positive. And also, I have absolutely no doubt that a strong economy will also have a very good impact on the peace and stability in Afghanistan, because that which also remains a priority consideration for the United States of America. Why? Because the economies of Pakistan and Afghanistan are very, very closely linked. Uh, we have a $2.5 billion uh, trade with um, Afghanistan, so that, you know, you can well imagine the kind of strength that we have in this um, uh, relationship. And also, uh, it would, uh, um, uh, uh, it would build Afghanistan's economy to a large extent. A, a strong economic base will be good for the economy of uh, uh, Pakistan, for Afghanistan. We can, in that case, uh, build on the uh, linkages, the regional linkages that we are talking, economic linkages that we are talking about. Uh, positive footprints. Um, the United States has. Uh, Done, uh, had done a great job in building Pakistan's uh, capacity in the last in the last 50, 60 years. Uh, some of the major dams we uh, owe it to the people of Pakistan, owe it to uh, the uh, people of the United States of America because those large dams which were constructed uh, 30 to 40 years are still working and pro producing the cheapest possible electricity. Similar consideration uh, of the mega projects uh, that we uh, wish to launch, uh, the uh, Dayamir Bhasha uh, project, which will produce 4,500 megawatts of electricity, and another project is Dasu, which will again produce 4,500. A support to these projects would, and uh, its U.S. involvement would again uh, create a wonderful uh, uh, environment and a Positive narrative about each other, I think it is, uh, again, very, very important. Why uh, this is important? Because uh, I, uh, in my capacity I, as Foreign Secretary, uh, in the last two years, I have experienced that if you give a positive briefing to your own members of the media, to members of the parliament, uh, the it creates uh, Positivity. If the leadership, uh, officials, 
dealing with each other, also gave positive briefings to the uh, respective members of the parliament, uh, media, it creates positivity. Because of the efforts which we have made, I'm sure that you must have seen the latest Pew poll, which whereby the uh, US standing in the eyes of Pakistan has, has risen by almost 30 points, which is, and I think this is the trajectory that we would like to follow. Uh, we in Pakistan would like to, to, uh, to highlight the positives in this relationship uh, uh, so that people are aware that the United States of America, uh, it's, it's a wonderful country, it is a country which is with, with whom we share many uh, very good things, uh, democracy, um, uh, rule of law, um, uh, economic uh, partnership, uh, regional stability and all these things. I'll uh, uh, briefly mention uh, Afghanistan and also uh, briefly mention some other uh, hotspots. Uh, I hope it's okay. Yes, it's, uh, we have until have, one, one o'clock. We have until one o'clock. <laughs> okay. Um, Afghanistan, uh, briefly I would mention that um, uh, we have uh, made very good efforts uh, jointly with the U.S. in order to bring about peace and stability. Uh, we have been very closely involved in this Afghan-led and Afghan-owned reconciliation process. Um, there are, uh, we have also been involved in the reconstruction of Afghanistan. We have spent $500 million in various projects in, uh, in, in, in Afghanistan, and the projects include Torkham to Jalalabad Road. We have built hospitals, we have built uh, the uh, university block, we have built high schools, we have built primary schools. In, and we have built an eye center with this, this amount. Uh, we, uh, uh, we also uh, impart training to their government departments in Pakistan. But despite, and we also offer 6,000 scholarships to Afghan students to study in Pakistan. There are positive developments related to Afghanistan, but uh, there are also negative developments, uh, which uh, certainly remain a cause of concern for us. Um, if you judge the situation in Afghanistan on mainly three barometers, uh, and the three barometers, I mean the uh, uh, one is the critical process reconciliation, number two is uh, the economy, and third is the security, the scorecard does not uh, look very good. Uh, the um, we only hope that the coming elections, which are taking place on 5th of April, uh, they are held in a free and fair uh, environment. We will provide every possible assistance in the run-up to the elections. We have had a series of meetings between the Interior Secretary of Pakistan and the uh, Afghan Deputy Foreign Minister to look at some of the security issues, including border management, because this border between Afghanistan and Pakistan, as I mentioned, it's a very long border and it's a porous border, and, uh, but we will make sure that um, the security, uh, we beef up the security on the border and we run up to, to the elections so that no untoward incident takes place. Uh, there are a lot of hopes attached to the election because we feel that elections once held would certainly uh, lay the foundation of some degree of stability. But at the same time, it's important uh, for all of us to remain engaged with Afghanistan. There are going to be enormous security challenges. There are going to be enormous uh, uh, economic challenges that Afghanistan is going to confront in the days to come. Um, India, um, again, um, I mentioned that uh, the history is certainly not uh, a very glorious history of our relation with uh, India. There, uh, but. The important thing is that the time that I was posted uh, to India and uh, the and now I think there is a, a degree of uh, uh, maturity that has set in in this relationship. There is a realization in both countries that war is not certainly not an option uh, because of the uh, nuclear factor. As a matter of fact, we both have agreed um, formally that uh, the nuclear factor is a factor of stability between India and Pakistan. 
I think there are uh, uh, economic reasons, there are international re reasons, there, there are also uh, reasons um, uh, on the, you know, as far as uh, at the level of, and realization at the level of the common man that we need to resolve our differences on the basis of international legality and morality, and uh, uh, in order to, uh, to uh, focus on the economic development of our, uh, of our people. Uh, our, uh, recently, um, Prime Minister Pakistan and Prime Minister uh, uh, Manmohan Singh had met in New York. Our Prime Minister, as you know, that the vision that he explained uh, immediately after taking over as the Prime Minister, he mentioned that uh, relations with uh, Afghanistan, uh, India, uh, the regional peace would be the priority, uh, foreign policy priorities of the, of the new government. So this is the vision that he wants to translate into reality. He mentioned to the told Prime Minister Manmohan Singh that um, terrorism was certainly as much a concern of India as it is of Pakistan. Um, it is a, a equal concern to Pakistan, so he proposed the establishment of a mechanism to be headed by the national security advisors of the two countries to deal with this issue. The important thing is that terrorism being an important issue, we need to discuss this issue in a very uh, candid and discreet fashion, and we should not uh, use the uh, terrorist incidents in order to, uh, to uh, use it as a propaganda tool against the other, but to grapple with this issue head-on. Of course, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, as part of this uh, vision, we need to address uh, important issues. Jammu and Kashmir is certainly uh, uh, the most important issue. Siachen Glacier, on which uh, the agreement is already in place, we would like the implementation of the Siachen Glacier issue. Sir Creek, um, issues related to terrorism, we have concern with regard to uh, their uh, activities, with regard to, uh, to in support of some elements from Baluchistan, and uh, similarly they have some concern with regard to the activities of some jihadi organizations who are based in Pakistan. So I think these are the kind of things that we need to be uh, discussing and seriously addressing these, these issues. Um, with this, uh, Mark, <laughs> thank you so much once again. Uh, I think I have, <laughs> I was given 25 minutes, but uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> Although the ambassador has taken more time than we wanted. In a sense, uh, he's already preempted so many questions by the, I think, the wide-ranging character of his comments. So uh, we'll have time for only about uh, 18 or so minutes for questions. But So in order to get as many as possible in, please, in a, after you've identified yourself, uh, do, uh, do indicate, uh, uh, make, your, make your questions brief, brief ones. And, uh, and particularly if they're comments rather than questions. Uh, before, though, uh, entertain the first of these, uh, let me uh, say that I was remiss in my enthusiasm to announce the ambassador, uh, not to mention the Lewis Hughes, the gentleman who has made uh, a series of lectures on Afghanistan and Pakistan possible. So I just want to acknowledge uh, our gratitude to him that we can have lunch for us, for example, uh, this afternoon. Uh, so uh, the floor is open. The ambassador has kindly offered to, to uh, 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 make comments. So let me take the first one right down here, please. So if you will, and please into the microphone. Hi, my name is Ann Rutherford. And um, so I was wondering, their support for the Taliban from Pakistan. You know, soldiers have seen they would be uh, attacking or defending themselves against the Taliban, and they see the Pakistanis pull them into safety. There's, so their support for the Taliban in Pakistan. And to what do you attribute that, and is that um, mostly attributed to the drone strikes that have apparently now been subsided for three months? Yeah. <coughs> um, there are um, uh, 
you know, there is no doubt that there is the presence of uh, these elements in the tribal areas of Pakistan. Um, I mentioned it in my remarks also, that is, that certainly remains a matter of concern. But it is not only the Taliban and Taliban who were present, but also all those people who were brought to Afghanistan in the uh, 70s and early 80s. Uh, they and, and after 9-11, all these people, they somehow they uh, got together in, in the tribal areas of Pakistan. Now, you know, the makeup of the tribal areas is such, and particularly this area where these people are, it's not that you know they would all be sitting at one place and they would go and take action against. They're all they have. It's a very treacherous uh, uh, area. It's um, there are rugged mountains, and obviously all these people they have made uh, those areas. I wish that I had the uh, I brought the slides with me because in order to show you um, as to uh, how difficult it is. Uh, but the fact remains that we have deployed about. 150,000 troops on the border. The uh, fact remains that we, uh, we, uh, we have been taking actions. We have been able to clear uh, seven area, uh, six areas out of the seven difficult areas in the tribal areas of Pakistan. One area that is left, and uh, again, as I mentioned, that we have developed a comprehensive uh, strategy to deal with this phenomena. The contours of the strategy have already been shared by, by us by the, <coughs> with the United States of America. Uh, we are working very, very closely with the U.S. military, with U.S. intelligence uh, on these areas in order to cooperate. Uh, but the point is that this is um, uh, 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 when the operations have already begun. It's the, you know, for the time being, it's uh, only the targeted operations. But once the full-fledged uh, operations are launched, they will probably target everybody, including uh, the people that you are referring to. Okay. Um, all the way in the rear there. Yes, Dana? Huh? <coughs> Thank you, Marvin. It's uh, Dana Marsh with Transnational Strategy Group. Um, Mr. Ambassador, you mentioned uh, one of the more positive things that I heard you talk about was the uh, view of the United States in the eyes of Pakistanis. And you mentioned a significant increase uh, in the public opinion polls favorable. I wonder if you could, uh, if I could draw you out a little bit as to why you think that's the case and what steps do you think the United States and Pakistan could do jointly that would continue that trajectory. Just say, in that connection, I know in previous public opinion polls that have been taken in Pakistan, when the question was, what is the single most important thing the United States could do to enhance its image in Pakistan, the answer came back, jobs, trade, business. I wonder if you see that continue to be the case and, and sort of how we can continue that moving forward. Thank you. You know, I mentioned about this positivity that has generated in Pakistan because of some wonderful steps that the United States of America has taken in recent months. Um, you know, both in terms of uh, the uh, economic uh, cooperation on trade issues and also on the energy sector. In counterterrorism, again, uh, we have a very good cooperation. But let me tell you that uh, while that was the case, I uh, gave you the Pakistan narrative uh, in Pakistan, but I have had a similar experience ever since I have come to the uh, to Washington in the last six weeks. Uh, I have been very um, warmly received at every level. I have interacted with the state, with the uh, Department of Defense, with the intelligence community, with the uh, with the army, with the uh, with think tanks, with members of the Congress, and there is a. There is, I have found an equal desire on the part of uh, almost everybody to build this relationship. And they are, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, I am very optimistic about this relationship. I am opti optimistic because I see a lot of uh, uh, desire on the part of the, uh, by, by everybody in the U.S. to build this relationship. And also there is a realization that uh, the, uh, that uh, this, Interaction of the past, I think that would have been uh, done in a more positive fashion. 
and I think probably the, the next uh, coming months and years, uh, I think the interaction at every level is going to be very, very positive. I, I, when I was coming here, I got a very positive uh, uh, briefing from our defense side, from our intelligence side, uh, from our uh, uh, commerce side, and the same as the case uh, on, the, on the US side. I think the trade and commerce is certainly going to play a very, very important role. Uh, it is going to make a huge difference. Uh, it is certainly going to be, I, as I mentioned, that it would convey to the people of Pakistan that the US is, <coughs> wants to forge a, a long-term partnership with Pakistan. And I think nothing uh, would produce the kind of results that we jointly want to produce. Uh, except by giving this, uh, you know, the uh, uh, building Pakistan's economy, promotion of trade and economic relationship. Thank you. Uh, let's see if we can. Uh, last time we did this, we were accused of not recognizing enough women. So I'm going to. Thank you, Mr. Ambassador, for being here today. Uh, the U.S. government has been very frustrated by the lack of willingness of President Karzai to sign a bilateral security agreement, uh, which has, it, despite the Loya Jirga's recommendations, and uh, it has cost the administration to throw out uh, the option of withdrawing entirely. If you were asked for your advice, what would you tell the U.S. government? <laughs> what would I ask the U.S. government to? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, you know, we have, um, I think the abrupt withdrawal of um, foreign forces uh, would certainly not be in the interest of um, anyone. Uh, as I mentioned that there are going to be security challenges. Uh, the uh, number of processes that we hoped uh, would move forward have not moved um, uh, to the desired level. <laughs> The reconciliation process was still at the embryonic stage. Uh, a, uh, so these all, and then the econo uh, you know, economy, the base was very, very small, was a very weak base. Uh, 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 and also the security problem uh, are going to be enormous. In that case, I think some kind of a help in the in the security arena was uh, important. I think the. Uh, um, U.S. administration, I must say, that has handled this situation with very, very deftly. Uh, they, um, I was looking at the um, uh, the statement that was issued after President Obama spoke to President Karzai. I think it was uh, a very uh, statesman-like conversation that he had. Uh, uh, the uh, the idea basically was to to build a long-term relationship. And this is the message that was conveyed to, to, uh, to, to the people of Afghanistan. I think that's, I think the engagement in the time, in the, after the elections, uh, would certainly remain, should remain a priority area uh, for all of us. Uh, engagement is very, very important. I think we all need to work uh, jointly in order to, uh, to, to ensure that uh, this economic focus should remain on Afghanistan. Uh, we continue to, uh, we should ensure that Afghanistan remains neutral uh, because that's very, very important. <coughs> and also, uh, we need to continue to extend help in building a strong um, security force. These are some of the important areas. This gentleman right here, yes. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Thank you, Ambassador, for <clears throat> coming today. Um, there have been a number of would you, would you introduce yourself? Oh, sorry. My name is Connor Arrington, and I consider myself a Kashmir enthusiast. Um, <laughs> <laughs> some have expressed a concern um, with the anticipated withdrawal of NATO and, and U.S. troops in Afghanistan, that there could be a swing in, in, in by an uptick in violence in, in the Kashmir area. Is, is there anything that, that Pakistan can do to uh, preempt that, uh, if that is even a potential? And is there any role that the U.S. could do in, in, in helping that and, and securing that 
relationship with Pakistan and India? Um, I think the, um, I, uh, frankly speaking, we do not really see any connection between the spurt in violence in Kashmir and also the withdrawal of forces from Afghanistan. Mainly, uh, you are aware of the uh, uh, reasons why there is uh, a situation that exists in, in, in the Indian occupied Kashmir. It is obviously because of the uh, you know large presence of the uh, security forces, the kind of uh, uh, situation that exists. That is basically uh, all that has been highlighted. The important thing is mainly to to discuss this issue, uh, you know, the Pakistan India should discuss this issue in a uh, in a manner that should satisfy the people of Kashmir because uh, this is a very very important area. There, there are uh, it's the question of the people of uh, Kashmir. Uh, the struggle, uh, Kashmiri struggle, predates the situation in Afghanistan. So uh, there is a situation. I think there are a number of things which can be done in order to, to bring this uh, situation. Uh, I think the uh, addressing people's concerns, uh, their legitimating, addressing their legitimate aspirations would be something which would, be, which would bring a lot of peace in that region. Okay. Yes. USAID. Uh, there are a large number of U.S. companies that are actually doing quite well in Pakistan, uh, but there's obviously potential for a lot more to happen. Um, some of the concerns that American businesses have are already being dealt with. I work for USAID. Uh, we're obviously working with the government of Pakistan very closely on energy. Um, but Pakistan has also slipped in the rankings on a number of global competitiveness indexes, uh, doing business reports. Um, there's a recent survey of 200 businessmen in Karachi that identified corruption as one of their top concerns. So if you could talk about maybe some of the specific t steps that the government of Pakistan is taking uh, to invite particularly the U.S. of Pakistan to kind of assuage some of their concerns, uh, I think that would be helpful. And, and also if you could talk about the security situation in Karachi, if that being kind of an economic hub. Uh, yes. You know, um, business, I know that a lot, and I keep interacting with the business community in the U.S. on a regular basis. Uh, I had a very good session um, at the U.S. Chamber of Commerce the other day. I, uh, my, our our uh, feedback is entirely different from what you are saying. I think our feedback, and that is something that was also reported in a number of uh, the influential newspapers like Wall Street Journal and New York Times, was that the business environment in Pakistan and the business confidence in Pakistan had improved in the last six to eight months ever since the new government had come into power. The, uh, uh, there, is, um, there are reports that I have seen whereby, and that is also reflected in the large amount of foreign investment that we have begun to see in Pakistan. Most of the companies who have, uh, who have who, the American companies who are doing businesses in Pakistan, they are making good money. And uh, this uh, year, in the coming months, we are expecting uh, the foreign um, investment to the uh, tune of about seven to eight billion dollars. So you know that is something that would be a record um, foreign direct investment in the last many, many years. But I think the um, situation from our point of view is certainly looking up. Corruption you mentioned is, uh, um, uh, is certainly a, an important issue. But let me tell you that the corruption was also an issue during the election campaign. Uh, good governance and corruption. The uh, kind of media that we have, they keep highlighting these issues. The judiciary also takes soon more notice whenever any uh, uh, corruption case comes to their notice. And uh, the, there is a very serious accountability process that is, uh, that is currently underway. It is because of this reason that we have been able to raise the uh, tax revenue by 17%. And uh, in the next phase, I have absolutely no doubt that the kind of steps that the government has introduced, we will, will, will further have improvement in this area. Uh, uh, Sorry, your second uh, uh, part Just of the security situation in Karachi. Generally. Yes, the security situation in Karachi. Karachi is a city um, uh, of 20 million people. Uh, there is uh, a security situation in Karachi, but then the, uh, we have also 
uh, launched uh, operations, a large number of people uh, who were involved in crimes, they have been apprehended. And I, uh, again, um, like overall focus that we have with regard to the security situation, we have absolutely no doubt that we will be able to contain it. Uh, and let me tell you that the government is very sensitive about these security issues, very, very sensitive about these security issues because uh, the Prime Minister who, uh, you know, uh, he thinks that the economic revival cannot take place unless uh, we improve the security situation and we have to create a favorable uh, environment for the uh, local as well as the foreign businessmen. Um, we, now that we have launched uh, some uh, major uh, projects with the help of the United States of America, with the help of uh, the uh, European Union, and with, with the help of China and Pakistan, uh, including this economic corridor that we, uh, we are uh, uh, building. Uh, we would need security and the government, the kind of strategy that has been formulated and approved by the government that will have a very, very positive impact on these things. We take one more question. Oh, right. Right um, thank you, sir. This is Fayaz Yasin from the Atlantic Council. Uh, my question is that historically, part U.S. relations they have been governed by um, by the larger geostrategic strategic interest, which are again driven by crisis of the day, like uh, Russian invasion in Afghanistan and recently um, USA uh, pursuing Qaeda in Afghanistan. So, so uh, by the end of 2014, when the uh, U.S. will be withdrawing from, from Afghanistan and those geostrategic interests will be minimized, what are the incentives for both the countries to sustain this present momentum of you know, bilateral relations? Thank you. Well, you are absolutely right that you know, um, from time to time, these pressing issues have brought this close relationship further closer. But I. I mentioned in my talk that in order to develop into a comprehensive relationship, again I would repeat, building of trust, uh, developing very strong economic and trade relations between our two countries. Uh, there is no harm in, uh, in uh, developing convergences on the kind of uh, pressing issue because obviously you can't anticipate a situation uh, that may arise for us or may arise for uh, the US uh, in, in the future. Uh, again, I think uh, we should uh, continue to uh, to uh, engage very, very closely in order to tackle uh, not only the present challenges, but also the future challenges that we will be likely to confront. Well, I think uh, you would agree with me that uh, Pakistan is very fortunate to have someone of the ambassador's caliber as its spokesperson, among other things that he does here in this country. And we're very, I think, fortunate too in his willingness, appreciative of his willingness to address such a wide array of, of topics and I might add also his willingness to personalize a good deal of what he said. Uh, so please join me in thanking the ambassador for coming with us this, after, this afternoon. Thank you so much. Thank you. I enjoyed this interaction. Thank you.